Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. This video will be about how to show different kinds of dialogues to let the user enter some data. The Android framework provides the alert dialog class with which we can create lots of different dialogues very easily. And I already prepared a little layout here, our activity main.xml. I prepared that little layout with three buttons because I want to show you three different kinds of dialogues. If you don't know how to build this layout, then I suggest you to watch my video about constraint layout and buttons first. But here you can have my XML code, so you can just pause the video and write it off. And make sure to use a constraint layout here. The first dialog I want to create with you is when the user clicks on that button dialog one here. And that should be just a simple yes no dialog where the user can either accept or decline a change. So let's jump into our main activity.kt file. And here we can create the instance of our dialog. So val, and I want to create an add contact dialog here. So that just says, do you want to add this person to your contact list? And then you have that yes option or that no option. So let's write val add contact dialog, alert dialog dot builder. So we don't use the alert dialog class right away. Instead, it has an inner class, which is called builder. And that is a very common pattern that you will encounter very often in Android. So in this case, for dialogs, we can set very many customized options that we can choose on our own. And it would be a horrible style to put them all inside of a constructor to define how our alert dialog looks like. And instead, that alert dialog class contains an inner builder class with which we can only set the options for the dialog that we wanted to have. So we can see what I mean in a sec. So let's um, call that constructor for that builder class. And here we need to pass the context. So we just pass this. And now if we write a dot after that, then we can see all the available functions we can call on that builder. And here you can see there are many, many functions how we can customize our alert dialog. And if you look at the return type of those functions, so for example, it doesn't really matter, each function here um, returns a builder again. So that means because that function returns that builder, we can call each function again on that function. So if you if you write set title, for example, to set the title of our dialog to add contact, then this function here returns such a builder too. So we can write a dot after that again and call all those functions again on that set title function. But let's actually use a new line for each function we call on that builder just for readability. Then let's call the set message function here. That is just to display a general message that explains what this dialog is for. So in this case, do you want to add Mr. Poop to your context list? The next thing I want to do here is to add an icon to our um, add contact dialog. So let's call the set icon function. And here we need to provide an ID from our drawable folder. So I will use r.drawable.ic add contact. And that doesn't exist, of course, because we didn't add it. So let's go to your um, drawable folder here, right click, new image asset. And here you can see, I already um, used that icon before. If you don't have it like this, then choose IC add contact as a name click on that clip art and you can use that search bar to search for person ad. And that's the icon I want to use here. But of course you can choose any icon that you want. So select the item icon that you want, click OK and make sure to select custom as a theme and use black as color for that icon because the background of our alert dialog will be white. And this is why I want to set the color of that icon to black so it is visible on a white background. Then click next and finish. And now it finds our icon. And the last thing that is missing now is the actual yes or no option. 
So the user can choose whether he wants to add Mr. Proof to his context list or not. To do that, we need to write dot set positive button for the yes button. And here we can um, choose a string that will be displayed. So that is basically the title of that button, which is just yes. And here we need to pass a lambda function. And we need to, that lambda function takes parameters. So if you click at the right starting curly bracket here and press control and space, then we need to implement that dialog interface and I variable here. So just press enter here and you can rename them if you want. I will just leave them like that. We would need that dialog interface parameter if we wanted to access the interface of our dialog. So for example, if we wanted to dismiss that dialog or cancel it, but every time we use that set positive button function, that means it will dismiss the dialog automatically if we click on it. Because dismissing means for dialogues that the dialogue's job is done. And when the user clicks on yes or no, then we know that the dialogue's job is done. On the other hand, canceling a dialogue means that the user wants to escape from that dialogue without choosing one option. So for example, if he presses a back button or something like that, then we would use the cancel function. So in this case, we don't need that dialogue interface parameter. And we also don't need that I here, which just which is just an integer that describes which button was clicked. And every time you use a Kotlin Lambda function like this, that takes two parameters here, and we don't need those parameters, then we can replace those parameters with an underscore. So just select that parameter and replace it with an underscore here. And the same for I. That code will now be executed whenever the user clicks on that positive button, on that yes button. Then I want to display a toast. So toast.make text, pass this as context. And now we need to um, enter a text for that toast. For example, you added Mr. Poop to your contact list and toast.length short and make sure to call that show after that. And of course we have to do the same for the negative button for the no button. So let's copy that part where we set the, the positive button here, paste it below, replace set positive button with set negative button, replace yes with no of course, and let's write you didn't add You didn't add Mr. Proof to your contact list. And that's actually it to create that customized dialog. But actually there's one more step we have to do to actually create the real dialog because currently we only created the builder of that dialog because that set negative button um, function also returns a builder. And currently that add contact dialog here, that object is a builder too. And to actually create that dialog that actually returns an alert dialog and not a builder, we need to call dot create afterwards. And here you can see that returns an alert dialog. And now we can set an on click listener to our button dialog one. So to show our first dialog, which we just created. So button dialog one dot set on click listener. And inside here, we just need to call add contact dialog. So our just created dialog dot show. Then let's run that app to demonstrate you what happens. So if we now click on dialog one, then this add contact dialog will show. And I think it looks really cool. So here's your icon, then the title add contact. And it says, do you want to add Mr. Proof to your context list? And now we can choose either no or yes. So let's choose no. And then a toast appears. You didn't add Mr. Proof to your context list. If we choose yes here, then it says you added Mr. Proof to your contact list. The next dialog I want to show you is a single choice dialog, which is very similar to radio buttons, just in form of a dialog. So where you have several options to choose from, but you can only choose one of them. For that, we first need to create an array of strings that define the different options. So let's write val well, options is equal to array of 
first item, so for the first item, then second item and third item. Then we need an alert dialog builder again. So let's write val single choice dialog is equal to alert dialog dot builder. Pass this for the context again. We can set the title to choose one of these options. And then we can set single choice items as you can see. And that function is overloaded with very many versions of it. I will choose the version of that function that takes that array as first parameter, which is just our options array. Then the next item is which item should be checked by default. So let's just choose zero for the first item. And now you now we have to add an on click listener again. So in this case, it's actually an on item check listener that is called whenever we check a different item. So let's pass this as a Lambda function again. And inside of those curly brackets, press control space and choose those two variables here, dialog interface and I. So press enter here. I leave the names like that and go inside of that block. Here I will copy that toast from above and just paste it. So I just want to display a toast message here whenever we check another item. And this toast message, message should say you clicked on. And now we can pass our options away at the index, options dot and then that index at the index of i. And that i that is passed here as a parameter to our lambda function is the index of the item that was currently checked. So if we want to get the actual item name, then we have to access our options array at the index of i. So if i is zero, then that would mean we just clicked on the zeroth item and options at the index of zero would just be first item. So it would just show a toast, you clicked on first item here. And then we also want to add a positive and negative button to that single choice dialog. So we are able to dismiss it. And for that, I will just copy what we have above here. And I will also copy dot create and just paste it below here. And of course, we can replace those texts, for example, the positive button with accept and change the text of that toast to you accepted the single choice dialog and change this to decline and this to you declined the single choice dialog. Then we can add an on click listener to our button dialog two. And here we want to show that single choice dialog. So single choice dialog dot show. Let's run our app to show you what happens. So if we now click on dialog two, then this dialog will sh um, show up. We can choose between those three items. Every time we check another item, it shows a toast. You clicked on second item, you clicked on first item, and you clicked on third item. So that works fine. And if we decline that dialog, then it tells us to decline the single choice dialog. If we accept it, you accepted the single choice dialog. And of course, if there is a single choice dialog, then there's also a multi choice dialog. For that, I just want to copy that whole single choice dialog because we don't need to make much changes for the multi choice dialog. Let's rename this to multi choice dialog. And we can leave the, we can leave it like that. Just replace that set single choice items function here with set multi choice items. And this takes our options array again for the different options we can check. And those options will now be like checkboxes, so we can check several of them. Now we need to provide a boolean array to 
determine the initial state of our options, so which options are checked initially and which not. So let's write boolean array of, and because we have three items in our options array here, we also need to add three booleans into that boolean array, and I will leave them all unchecked initially, so let's write false, false, and false. So that just means that the first item is unchecked, the second item is unchecked, and the third item is unchecked. If I wanted to check the, the second item initially, then we would need to replace this false with true, but I want to leave them all unchecked. After that, we have to use that lambda function again. So what happens if we click on one option here? So let's open curly brackets, press control space to insert those parameters. In this case, there are three parameters, the dialog interface, which we don't need here, because we have a positive and negative button, which will dismiss that dialog anyway. Then we have that variable i, which refers to the current index of the item that is either checked or unchecked. So we need that variable i. And we have that variable b, which is just a boolean that says whether that item was currently checked or unchecked. So we could also rename this to is checked. So it's actually a little bit more clear what this is for. Then we can go into that block and we can create a toast again. So toast.make text, pass this as context. And as a message, you checked um, options at the index of i. And toast.length short dot show. Oops. And of course, we only want to um, show that toast if we actually checked that option one. So we don't want to show that toast if we unchecked it. And because of that, we need to check um, if is checked. So if is checked is true, then we know that this current item was checked from false to true. And in that case, we want to show that toast. And we could, we could also write an else case here. So if we unchecked an item, then we could also display a toast, but replace this with unchecked. And also rename this single choice dialog to multi choice dialog. Copy it and paste it below. Finally, we can add that on click listener to our button dialog three. Oops, button dialog three here. Dot set on click listener. And here we can just call multi choice dialog dot show. So let's run our app. And if we now click on dialog three, then that multi choice dialog will open. And you can see those are all checkboxes. We can check several of them. And every time a toast shows up, you check the first item, you check the second item. If we uncheck them, you uncheck second item, you check third item, you uncheck first item, so you get it. And if you click on decline, it says you declined the multi-choice dialog. If you click on accept, you accepted the multi-choice dialog. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please comment below and leave a like. Also, if there's anything I can improve on, then please let me know. That would really help me. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.